Live from the broadcasting house here in the county of Nairobi, this is the great KBC and this is KBC News Check. Well, in this program, we look at uh, the things that are happening in the country, what is ailing the country, what are some of the news making or shaping the headlines in the country. Well, and talking about what has been trending in the country, in, on social media, everywhere, and even on the newspapers, is the Shaka Hola horror for for lack of a better word 58 graves have already been dug and 58 bodies have been discovered in Kilifi County and well it has made quite a conversation not only here in the country and even if you peruse other social media and also international media they are actually actually I've been corrected 73 bodies to this moment well the police and other stakeholders are still looking for other bodies in more than 800 acres of space and land in Kilifi County. Well, the, even the international media have made this one of their headlines just to show you how dire this situation is. Well, that is the discussion that we are going to have this hour. And thank you indeed so much for joining us. My name is Bentro Injue. Lucy Moura will be my colleague. She is on the bottom right of your screen. She will be handling the sign language interpretation. Thank you indeed so much for joining us, for comments, suggestions, or even where you are watching us from. We are live on all our socials. Well, right to the topic of discussion today, let me introduce my panelists. Uh, beginning from my immediate left, we have uh, Honorable Abdul Kore from Mandera South. He is the member of parliament and just next to him we have Bishop Bishop Dagana. Bishop Dagana holds a number or wears a number of hats. First, Bishop David Dagana is a Secretary General of the Federation of Evangelical Churches of Kenya and also the founder and the presiding Bishop of Glory Outreach Assembly. Bishop Karibusana. Asante sana. Well, even before we delve into this quite serious situation i would like to pick your sentiments on the first day you heard about this what came to your mind disappointment uh, <coughs> shame uh, a feeling of uh, this should not have happened and uh, of course grief for my fellow my fellow kenyans and even more grief for parents who have lost their children there, for spouses who have lost their, their partners there, mm -hmm. which I am very sad about and, and in my own way continue to send my own condolences and to, to pray for them as they go through this. Mm -hmm. uh, it is really, uh, it's really heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking mm -hmm. to, uh, to go through what we're going through and that is what came to my mind and you do agree something needs to give uh, Absolutely something something. Yes absolutely Moshmiwa This is something that has caught a lot of people unawares including our security agencies the head of state yesterday equated this to terrorism and Rightfully so because that of the radicalization that is currently being witnessed in Shakahola yeah, definitely. You cannot call it any any other thing, but just like the bishop said, first of all, let me grieve with, with the families who've lost their dear ones, children, innocent children who've lost their lives in that gruesome manner, mm -hmm. and, and, and people who've lost their, 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 their spouses. And uh, having said that, uh, this is uh, terrorism in its pure element. Mm -hmm. and, and when you talk of radicalization, we have seen students, you know, from this cult who've been told not to go to school, not to seek treatment, uh, students who have dropped even from colleges, students who have dropped from university, people whom you thought have been educated to a certain level, they will be able to understand certain things. But the way they have been hypnotized and the way they've been radicalized to believe in what they are doing is right. Uh, somebody was being rescued yesterday on the verge of death because of hunger. And, and they could still insist, insist and tell the security agencies, don't save me, I want to go to heaven, I want to go and, and, and meet Jesus, you know. Mm. 
if that's not radicalization, I, I don't think we, we, we have to wait for IEDs exploding uh, in our doorsteps yeah. or, or in our churches or in our mosques mm -hmm. for us to think this is radicalization. Uh -huh. This radicalization in its pure element and it starts in smaller ways like this, like in the case of Shakahola, uh, the, this, this, this so-called ministry. You've had people traveling from all over the country, people selling all the properties they had. Mm -hmm. Some travel with the entire family, children, wives, and, and, and husbands, mm -hmm. and, and disappeared there, and they've, they, and they've died there. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't know the, 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 the count of the graves people retrieved now. is about 70, 73 now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an 800-acre piece of land. Mm -hmm. We don't know how, much, how many more mm -hmm. will be discovered. And we even don't know whether this is just uh, a tip of an iceberg. It could be... Uh, something bigger than even what we we are thinking about. For mm -hmm. example, I would suggest uh, our security agencies. You know, when they are doing the the post mortem on those bodies, uh, they they should check whether even those bodies have all their body parts intact. Mm -hmm. It could be a scheme. It could be a business. Yes, yes. It could be something bigger than what we we think. And I think something needs to be done to regulate religious bodies. Uh, uh, the law, as it is now, is very weak on, on, on managing uh, religious, religious bodies because the Societies Act, mm -hmm. which, is, which is governing uh, religious bodies, uh, needs a lot of amendments so that some of the uh, you know, cults like this don't find their way mm -hmm. into uh, our mainstream uh, uh, religious, religious, uh, religious, religious organizations. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't have to be, you don't need to think about the churches only. All the religious groups mm -hmm. in this country, uh, something needs to be done from, from the law perspective so that uh, rogue people like this who play on people's psychology uh, and, and who radicalize young people and, and, and families don't find room to, 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 to maneuver. I'm told uh, from the early days, around 2018, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this so-called Mackenzie found himself in trouble. Uh, people have burnt his churches because they, didn't, they thought he was doing things which were not right. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know whether it's the lacuna in the law or the police just decided to look the other, the other way mm -hmm. because of you know, the corruption we have in this country or other things, mm. uh, it's, it's a bit sad, mm. you know, it's a mm. bit sad. From 2018, maybe we would have saved lots of lives if, we, if, 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 uh, if the law would have acted with, 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 with speed to act on, on, such, on such individuals. I totally concur because we, yesterday at exactly 1 p.m., the, uh, the, the IG, the Inspector General of Police, had an update which was reading 58 bodies. Now we are at 73 and the still the exhumation still continues. Bishop, the head of state yesterday uh, during the pass out parade uh, the Kenya prisons in Roy Roads said that um, we need to have an co honest conversation religious institution in the country. I would like to pick your mind on that because matters of religion are quite emotive in the country and the, the government, I'm quite sure, it wouldn't want to appear like it's regulating and um, infringing on some of the rights enshrined in Chapter 4 of the, uh, of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Do you think we really need to have that conversation now? Thank you so much. Uh, I, I agree. I agree with the President that uh, we need to have the conversation mm -hmm. and uh, I actually think we should have had it yesterday because uh, the things that, um, that we are seeing now are not, uh, they are not new to us, mm -hmm. only the magnitude mm -hmm. uh, is, 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 uh, is how much higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think uh, one of the things, as much as we would want to have this conversation, one of the things that probably we need to de desist from as, as Kenyans, mm -hmm. I, I think we are very reactive mm -hmm. and we ought to be more proactive. Mm. than reactive. Because when something like this happens, we react just like you have correctly said, it is all over in the social media, it's all, in, it's all over in the all media houses, mm -hmm. it is in the international. We are angry about it, we, we talk, we propose solutions, we react. Mm. But if we were more proactive in, uh, in looking at things before they happen, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just uh, and when something happens, we don't just uh, just talk about it and leave it at that point, mm -hmm. we could save a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I think, I do not really understand whether 
it is it is that uh, we have a lot of things that happens because nothing lasts so long <laughs> in our country <laughs> there is a, nothing lasts so long uh, uh, something comes and we pick it up all of us it becomes our subject mm -hmm. and uh, after some time another one comes and we we take that on and we react to it and I, and I, and so i when i would really want to agree with the president about the conversation but i want us to go beyond the the conversation and uh, and, and and have some 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 systems and structures mm -hmm. uh and, and 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 begin to look at as much more i said here mm -hmm. not just religion matters mm -hmm. we have many areas where we where where things like mm -hmm. this happen uh, and becomes tragic disaster and we just talk about it for some time and mm -hmm. then that's it mm -hmm. now regarding the the regulation i think this has is a long overdue conversation mm -hmm. about regulation and and and, uh, and i do not think there is anyone who has ever been against regulation the question has been how yes. mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I, I i think it is unanimous that definitely mm -hmm. and not just churches or religious organizations mm -hmm. that's what the government is about that's what the government exists to do mm -hmm. to protect its citizens mm -hmm. uh, but um i guess our major concern as churches has always been uh, when when uh, when it comes to that the churches be regulated by the government. Mm -hmm. I think that's our major concern. Mm -hmm. Because we do not uh, honestly think that uh, religious matters can, can be, uh, can be uh, clearly or appropriately regulated from, from, uh, from, from, uh, from, uh, by, by, by some kind of, by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, because they may, I, I'm not sure all of them will, uh, will fully understand mm -hmm. them as they are, mm -hmm. and the, the borderline between regulation mm -hmm. and curtailing the freedom mm -hmm. of worship mm -hmm. would be very thin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how to, how to determine that is, our major, is always our major concern. So, uh, and, wish, and the chance should not be hard to be saying that they don't want to be regulated. Mm -hmm. Neither should they be hard to, to be saying they are anti anti-regulation mm -hmm. but they should be clearly be hard to say that the church is for regulation but self-regulation uh -huh. whatever self-regulation means one way is under the umbrellas because this the when uh, during the days of professor Gethu Muigai, mm -hmm. there was a lot of emphasis that all of us uh, as churches may must belong to certain umbrella bodies mm -hmm. and so we depending on our religious affiliations mm -hmm. and what we are more inclined to have <coughs> <coughs> churches identified mm -hmm. and and so many so many umbrella bodies were were, were registered mm -hmm. I, I think everyone who is for the welfare of the people and who is serious about uh doing church mm -hmm. can't miss one umbrella bodies out of those that exist under which they can subscribe mm -hmm. themselves uh, and subject themselves for accountability. Mm -hmm. Just uh, that it, it is. I, I really concur with that. And uh, being the Secretary General of uh, the, the Federation of Evangelical Churches of Kenya, you will tell us exactly uh, what is maybe the criteria of the churches joining. Because um, what we have witnessed in the country, we are not seeing this from the mainstream churches or churches that have association like this, like Goa. We cannot see some of the things that we are seeing uh, here. But unfortunately, earlier on, we had um, a case in point, which was uh, broadcasted in media of uh, Pastor Kanyari, who um, the media did an earth that he was lying to, 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 to his congregants in terms of how the miracles are done. But we will get to that. Let's first of all rope in Wakili. Karibu sana. We also joined by Gibson Gisore, who is the advocate who is an advocate of the high court of kenya and also he is also a political and governance expert i will begin from where um, moses masika wetangula the speaker said he's also a lawyer mm -hmm. and he, he said that uh, indeed a lot of security organs were caught flat-footed uh, we're talking about even to the least nyumbakumi the village elder i'm happy to join my the panel here mm -hmm. and uh, it's good i've come and found them uh, doing the discussion. Mm. Uh, I don't know where to start, but uh, honestly, from where you have uh, thrown the banner to me, mm. I would want to say that uh, when I saw Moses, uh, the speaker, Moses Wetangula, say that, I tended to agree with him. Mm. I actually shared this post on uh, Facebook and said, I guess this is where we need to start. Mm. Because um, 
much as uh, what I've heard uh, Bishop say here is uh, the fact of churches uh, trying to regulate themselves. But for me, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. These are crimes. These are crimes which have been committed. We have lost 73 plus mm -hmm. and we're counting. This is murder. This is, I mean, I don't know whether this guy had bury your permits to bury all these bodies. Mm -hmm. You can't be running a, a cult where you just have no law attached to whatever it is that you are doing. So to start with, mm -hmm. from the point of government, I was really mad that I didn't see. Had the president not spoken yesterday about it, I would have been worried that uh, we are not safe mm -hmm. because... If the president or the leadership of the country cannot be able to address issues affecting people in, a, in, a, in, a, in such a magnitude, then mm -hmm. we, we are doomed. But I think I want to thank the president for coming out clearly and saying that these are criminals who, be, who belong to jail. Mm -hmm. And that is actually the whole thing. It's, it's appalling to realize that this uh, particular uh, Mackenzie pastor uh, actually was arrested and released on a 10,000 bail. How? Mm. With all this, and I, I suspect he's even still free. I don't know whether they have arrested him. Mm. So these are things which are worrying. These are things that the local administration, starting from the Nyumbakumi, starting from the chief, the assistant chief, even the neighbors, because that is condonation. You are condoning a crime. You know a particular crime is happening here, but you are just condoning it. Mm -hmm. We can't live a country where everybody will want to just uh, decide to make his own laws and then go ahead and execute it. And then, you know, much as uh, there's, there's been an argument, I've been engaging with some people on, uh, on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, my friends b believes that the pastor has not done anything wrong because his argument is that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Kenyans have... Uh, assumption of uh, being <coughs> valuable. <coughs> the constitution can uh, grant you as much, but not to the level that uh, you end up losing life. At the point you realize people have lost lives, that changes. Mm -hmm. That totally changes. We have not seen any member of the, of the family of this particular pastor die. Mm -hmm. You've seen the machinated bodies of those kids I've seen in, the, in, the, in, the, in social media. Why will we be allowing such things to happen in our country? Mm -hmm. We need to move fast. There was the aspect of which, uh, which Bishop has said where Gidu Mugay had uh, tried to, when he was there, he tried to, to do regulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen uh, Bishop struggle with the aspect of uh, government not coming to regulate. But then there's a clear framework on that. Mm -hmm. The Constitution talks of public participation. There will, there will be nobody who will come to regulate charges, but the government needs to have a platform. Start, we need to start somewhere to rein in on these rogue people who are claiming to be religious. Because religion does no, is not meant to kill people. Mm -hmm. Religion is supposed to help people get to heaven, mm -hmm. but not get to heaven through death or suicide. Mm -hmm. or, or telling them that you should stop eating, you should not stop taking kids to school. That is, goes against everything that we believe in, that even what the Bible actually talks about. Mm -hmm. So these are very serious, critical issues. Churches uh, can be able to continue to do whatever it is that they believe in, but within the law. In Rwanda, we had a serious uh, conversation, the, the Rwandese had a serious con conversation on churches. They decided that, I mean, if you're going to preach to our people, mm -hmm. we need to know where you get your doctrines from. You need to subscribe to some, you need to have gone to some school. Mm -hmm. You can't start uh, from, you can't come from the bush. You start a church. And you start indoctrinating people on things which we don't know where you got them from. Yeah, so let's true. first see which is the curriculum of the school you went to. Is the school approved? Uh, what, what do the doctrines do they believe in? Do, do those doctrines actually subscribe to what the constitution says? Mm. So once we are at that space, we can be able to rein in on whoever it is that we feel is doing something contrary. We, we should have arrested all these crooks who are doing funny miracles who are uh, prophesying doom and uh, trying to get to the mind, because religion is very powerful. Yes. And now the problem we have been through is actually the, the challenge I have. Our, our churches have become like political parties. 
You don't know which one is pro every political party is promising to get you to heaven, but they do none of that. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually have a clear framework. That is, I think, my, my parting shot, that we need to have a clear framework. We need to go get back to the bill and be able to look at. Mm -hmm. the, the, the worries with the churches that, uh, you know, at, at, at some point that the government will be coming in strong to rein in, there's no <coughs> problem. There's what is called public <coughs> participation. Let them come on board, be able to air their views, and then we have a clear cut program or mm -hmm. process or policy or now we should be able to be to, to exercise religion in this country and of course we're going to come back to to the dpp because whatever he said yesterday as well he pointed an accusing finger to the courts and i'm quite sure kenyans are wondering exactly where did we lose it but to hold the thought um Moshimiwa, looking at what a, a few weeks back we were looking at the lgbtq which also blew up the country and now we are talking about this um, even your speaker, the day before yesterday or yesterday, said that indeed these people need to be arrested, including all the, 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 the local administration, including the chief. They should be behind bars because this is not something that has just happened. This is somebody who has had some issues in 2017, I think in 2018, mm. had a run in with the area MP, then mm. who is the CS now. Mm. But nothing was done. I would like to see whether maybe in parliament we, we would come up with something that could uh, be if it's not regulation and audit on some of the religious sects that we have in the country. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I, I, I agree and I, and I had said it earlier. You see, the moment somebody like this, you know, is arrested, and then is freed, and then, you know, the public is frustrated to the extent that some of them even in some villages in Kilifi in 2018 burnt a few churches belonging to the same sect, mm -hmm. you know, from the frustration. So it means either our security agencies are corrupt to the core that they would look the other way when such things happen, or there's a lacuna in law which makes this guy you know, go scot-free every time he's arrested. Uh, and, and I saw a clip yesterday, I don't know whether it was a, a long, uh, long ago clip or it was a recent clip mm -hmm. where he was saying he didn't even force people to come to his churches. Yeah. You know, trying to hide behind some kind of a uh, legalist there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I think uh, I agree with the, with the speaker that uh, the, the, the security agencies in that part of the, of the world needs to be held accountable. Mm. What happened? How come, like Wakili says, that a whole village or even neighborhoods, you know, mm. people people are dying in their droves mm. and, and they're being buried. And, and, and in the typical culture of Kenyans, you know, they watch and, mm. and nothing happens. You know, I, I think something needs to be done. And, and I think as legislators, uh, we will definitely uh, look at the legislation and see whether the lacuna is in the law mm -hmm. and do something about the law. And that question around regulation, even the bishop agrees, it's the how that we need to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is, is very important. Mm -hmm. Whether uh, even the regulation by government or regulation by religious bodies, I think when we have a very serious conversation and, as Kenyans, mm -hmm. very serious, honest conversation as Kenyans with all the religious bodies, we will definitely arrive at a solution. I, I, I can tell you we have a very beautiful country. And, 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 uh, and, and freedom of, of, of religion is, is one very, very important, I don't know what to call it, it's a cardinal thing we have. I was in Saudi Arabia in December mm -hmm. performing Umrah, one of our rights uh, in, in, in Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was joined there by Muslims from other parts of the world. And, and I tell you, there are some people from a particular country, I, I won't even mention the country, mm -hmm. there are some people from a particular country, when we finish doing our Umrah and we are going back to our countries, I, 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 I boarded the flight using my kanzu, the one I had when I was praying in Mecca. Mm -hmm. But these people left their kanzus and all the religious regalia in Mecca. Mm -hmm. And when I ask them why, they say in their country where they've come from, mm -hmm. they will not have that freedom to worship. And, and they will be oh. killed if they are seen, you know, in Kansas. In, in Kansas. So freedom of, you know, worship mm. is, is something we cannot compromise. It's mm. a very valuable thing we have as Kenyans. Mm. But we don't, we won't allow people, you know, radicals like the ones we see, mm -hmm. to, to abuse that freedom. 
and, and we must do something as Kenyans. First, we start with the conversation, and as legislators, I can assure you, we'll do something in Parliament to deal with uh, the, the law. Okay, and, and Bishop, looking at uh, what is currently happening, and indeed you said we are quite a, a reactive country as, as opposed to being proactive. The clergy is quite coming out quite strongly now. But let's be very honest. We have seen some pastors do some fake miracles, and we do know because the media has already exposed them. But all of a sudden now, Pastor Mackenzie comes around. That is when now the country now is shouting on top of the roof. We know that there are some, some sects in the country that are not advancing the, the, the freedom of, of uh, association and freedom of, um, of worship the way they should, including some of the doctrines that we've mentioned here. Um, uh, case in point, the Kavonokia, where they do not want uh, 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 the, 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 the kids to be in hospitals, they do not want any formal education, they just want exactly what they want. But this is happening as we speak, it's happening. We should, we could be, we could be only scratching the service as we speak. It's a good thing that you mentioned that umbrella bodies like um, the, 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 the Federation of Evangelical Churches of Kenya. The churches that have come out to be either sects or have been investigated are those um, religious sects that do not um, um, have church councils, they're not under any umbrella bodies, but this is something that has been happening in the country year in, year <coughs> out. But hold the thought, let's first of all go back in, in for, uh, to a story that was done in 2019 in regards to catechism, and then we go back to this live discussion. <coughs> These photos and the letter are the only tangible things left as a reminder of the four children of Benson Motimba. He says the children aged between 10 to 22 years renounced education and left their home in Mutoti village in Mumias Kakamegi County for Malindi Kilifi County. Early this month, the eldest was pursuing an accounting course at Kiba Bay University while his three siblings are pupils at Mumia's Central Primary School. Mutimba says his world changed two months ago when the children came across a televangelist from Malindi, Pastor Paul Mackenzie. <laughs> Eh, class 1 paka class 8 Mumia Central Primary School Watoto wakaniambia wadogo Shule kifukuka tuwete shule Kwa dili oh, Juma metuambia Yo shule ni ya shetan tutachomeka binguni Kwa hivyo mipladimi sita kuchomeka Tumonesha tuwe moto kwa TV kama umenda kazi in a recorded telephone conversation between Mutimba and his eldest son, the young man is heard explaining to his father of his newly acquired religious knowledge. In the conversation, the son also expresses reservations against Sodoma number, likening it to the biblical apocalypse of the beast and admits burning his identification and education documents. <laughs> He is father heard urging his father to sell his property and relocate with the rest of the family to Malindi to fellowship at the church. This one has a shape of a snake. Mutimba accuses Pastor Mackenzie of indoctrinating his children with false religious teachings. Namini kwambia kwani hii kanisa tunaendanga ya pia jina hii mambia mungu tunafanyanga siya hiyo asema pana hiyo kanisa hakuna kanisa hapa hii inaomba mambia mungu kama siya pasi ya pastor ndia peleka watu bingu. Kwa sababu inasema ukweli uache kasi, yesu wakua nafanya kasi, uache kusoma, yesu wakua nasoma, uache kumesa dawa na njimi na mesa. Kwa hivyo hui ndana ubiru mambi ya kuenda binguni na dunia imeisha, yesu anaru, anarudi. Kulingana na maandiko ya kwamba, elim haitokani na yesu. Kwa hivyo, tukafanya uamuzi wa kuifata imani na tuachane na dunia. Pastor Mackenzie who runs Good News International Ministries has denied brainwashing Mutimba's children. 
anaenda yule mzee huko Nairobi akizunguka kwa media anazunguka paka kwa human rights vile nilisikia akisema mimi nimeficha watoto wake na ili hali watoto walitoka wenyewe kwao In May this year the same pastor was arrested and charged with disobedience of the law religious incitement and indoctrination of children Malindi OCPD Philip Wambogo confirmed that the televangelist has been accused of similar cases in the past. This is very true. The pastor is a... Uh, we have several cases in court of different nature. On Thursday, police raided his charge following allegations that several children were being held at the facility. We went to the church of um, the said pastor and we arrested a total of 11 children or people. Out of the 11, four are people above 18 years and the seven of them are below 18 years. Mutimba fears his children may have been lured into a cult. Kuna magendo inaendelea huko Malindi na serikali ijajua vizuri. Na kama serikali imejua ni wachacho wamejua. Sasa ndio nilikuwa naomba eh kupitia kwa inspector wa police pamoja na eh, CS Makoha Wetication pamoja na internal security matiani watu wafanye watu wanisaidie nipate watoto wangu wako kule Malindi wanipatie kwa mkono alafu watoto wengine wako huko ni wazazi wapo paka Malindi wameliwa paka wengine wamekufa wameacha watoto wao wachukua watoto kwa wawalete kwa serikali alafu watafuta wazazi wapi wapeana watoto kwao alafu pastor achukule hatua we have not arrested the pastor but he's with us always uh, um Once the need come for arresting we are going to arrest once we see the circumstances on how the children came into his hands as it is being arranged First reported in the 1930s cults became the object of sociological study in the context of the study of religious behavior Four decades ago, Reverend Jim Jones, the charismatic leader of an American cult in the Guyanese jungle, ordered his followers to murder a US congressman and several journalists, then commit mass suicide by drinking cyanide laced fruit punch. More than Very well, that is a report done by our very own Jackie Wambiru that was on 27th October 2019. And uh, you've seen that father came all the way here to the broadcasting house and he's saying and he's urging and talking about the, uh, the ministries and even mentioning the, mini the ministers themselves or the CEOs themselves. He needed help. He was crying out for help. Well, we've heard it. Bishop. Yes. Hoseas. Four chapter six talks about my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen to that. Amen yes, to that. Yes. And, uh, and and Ben. Yes. I, I think based on that, we the, the kind of uh, conversation that uh, the president was talking about mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think we need we need to be to have a broader broader perspective of it, a, uh, a wider conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said when I was starting, yes. our biggest problem as Kenyans is just being reactive mm -hmm. instead of being proactive. And, and there is always that thing that keeps us very reactive. You have just mentioned LGBT, that's what we had another time. And everyone was up to it. Mm -hmm. Now it is this. And mm -hmm. this will go, another one will come. Mm -hmm. But before we, we uh, uh, let us be careful, and this is, let us be careful uh, not to... To, to, to react to the point of uh, di diagnosing the wrong problem and, and, and prescribing treatment. Mm -hmm. Regulation could be part of it. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to such a story, you see it is, there is more conversation that is needed beyond uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. Because you first, the question you, first question you ask yourself, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the parents, of the children, mm -hmm. like that one. Mm -hmm. He has come out, he has tried to seek for help. Mm -hmm. well, wh why didn't he get help? Is, is that, uh, I, would the regulation of a church mm -hmm. have helped that? If churches <laughs> were, if churches were <laughs> being regulated? Why, did, why, 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 did, why didn't he get help? Mm -hmm. Now, number two, uh, the churches that these people who have joined this cult go to, They probably belong to my church or somebody else's church, GOA or another church that is not a cult. Mm -hmm. Why didn't uh, we teach them the truth so that they know the truth so much 
that when the fake comes, they can distinguish the false from the truth. Mm -hmm. So, so when we so mm -hmm. so before before we go to blame games and react and blame this and blame that, we need to look to widen the conversation and ask ourselves what is it that I, that I as a parent can do to ensure that I know where my children are going to, and uh, before I, before I blame somebody for brainwashing them, mm -hmm. I, I have failed somewhere as a parent, and if I have taken a, a, a step like the one we have seen, mm -hmm. whoever did not help me who should have helped me to the point of going to the media to, to ask for help, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that man came from a place where there's a system, mm -hmm. here we are talking of, of law and, and the legal systems, mm -hmm. he came from somewhere where he would have helped, his, he would have received his help right at the grassroots before he came to look for it here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the church, I have a responsibility to mm -hmm. teach my followers the true, and by the way, there is only one gospel. Mm -hmm. Gospel is only one. Mm -hmm. And this gospel is about love, mm -hmm. it's about uh, life, mm -hmm. giving life, it's about love. It's not about killing, it's not about taking life, it's not about hating. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, is a, it is a gospel of mm -hmm. helping people grow and develop. It is not about uh, stopping children from going to school. It's mm -hmm. not against technology. It's not about denying people from going to hospital. Mm -hmm. But we do believe that uh, you, can be, you can be prayed for and receive the healing. And, and I would I'd want, want us, as we have this conversation also, mm -hmm. that we do not crucify the church at the altar of the cultism and cults. Mm -hmm. And we need to distinguish. Mm -hmm. Is it the church? Is it the cult? Is it the occult? O this to me, it's not even a cult. Mm -hmm. A cult is, is, is a religious group that is indoctrinating people, leading them to, towards the wrong, the, the wrong, to become extreme. Mm -hmm. But when it be, they already become extreme like this, mm -hmm. and, towards, and, and then to, to, they are ready to die, they, to, uh, and somebody is ready to, to witness people die. When death comes in, that is occultic, that's satanic. That's satanic. Mm -hmm. And if we just react to something and just, just look at the solution in regulating the church and do not distinguish, we will not regulate the occult. We will not regulate <coughs> the cult. Yeah. We, will be, we will be putting the problem where it doesn't belong to. Mm -hmm. If a lot comes to your house, Panya, do you burn the house? No. You don't burn the house. So when we, when, when we have a, a Mackenzie or, or like a Vonokia, and they have come into a 99.9% of churches that are building the welfare of the people, the spiritual, the physical, uh, the education. We, we cannot wholesale blame the church. Mm. We are investing a lot of money into Kenyans as churches so that they go to school. 13% uh, of my budget in Glory Outreach Assembly is in education. 13% of the total budget. Mm -hmm. It is in GOA High School, which I have built with, with the um, our own church resources mm -hmm. in Kinangop. It is in the GOA Educational Center, which we have built with our own resources, the primary school. Mm -hmm. It is in Lodua, in a village where the government not even leashed with education by two or four. I went there and found people who had never been to school at all and build a school. When I build a school, I, 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 I am the one who came to to the then, those days, Speaker of mm. Parliament, Ekwa Ethro, and invited him to go with me to his own, to his own village called Akatuman. Mm. When we went there, the first thing he said, oh, kubwa ni mekua ni kipataza kura migi na mnahi. Because it's a village that is unknown. Mm. So, uh, and, and uh, we, we built the first class. Mm. Those days, CDF had not even started working. Uh, but when CDF came, because they found the church has built a classroom, we challenged them, can you also build one? And we worked very well with, uh, with the honorable member of parliament, uh, John Lodepe, mm -hmm. then central, Tukana central. We, we had a simple policy. You church, build one classroom, we build one. Employ one, one, one teacher, we employ another. Mm -hmm. Today is a full big there was no church in These are the transformations that are uh, required and needed in the country, not uh, telling students not to go to school. Not and, to go to. and that is why I'm, I have I've talked about a lot, getting into your house, you don't burn it, and you forget to see the beauty and the amount of money you spend building the house. People should open their eyes and see that the church in this country is investing a lot in education, 
churches have invested in medical, they have hospitals. Some of the best hospitals in this country, needless to name them, belong to churches. But if we look at, because a, an occultic person has said, don't go to hospital, then we, we say that churches are anti-hospital. 